What's up guys? I wanna make a video to answer a question that I get asked quite often, and that's how do you turn around a text exchange which is not going well? What do you do for girls being not compliant or even shitting on you? How do you go from that to ultimately getting her out? So I'm gonna walk you through a personal example of mine where the girl was just giving me a lot of shit and basically show you how I went from her giving me hate to ultimately setting up the date. So quick backstory, I met this girl on Tinder, we flirted a bit and set up a time to meet. Unfortunately, I had to reschedule on her due to unforeseen circumstances like me getting sick. And most girls would be totally cool with that as long as you give them a little bit of a heads up and you just agree to meet another night. But not this one. So this is where the uh, text exchange kicks off. I had messaged her about a week uh, earlier and she didn't respond so then I double text her a week later with Yo Sexy. And she says, you again. LOL. So here she's giving me a, like kind of like a, oh God, fucking you text, like what do you want type of shit. So I'm gonna purposely misinterpret that into something a bit better. And that's gonna be the running theme throughout this whole thing is I'm gonna take her from, from negative to neutral and then ultimately positive. And then once I have her in positive, not logically, but emotionally, then I can go and set up the date again because I cannot set up a meetup when she's a negative because that's just gonna lead to a no. So I have to first get her kind of on the spectrum to positive and then I can start pushing towards the meetup again. So I'm a big part of my strategy is gonna be just purposely misinterpreting things she says and just getting her to buy into my frame. So she responds with miss what exactly question mark. So I give her a cheeky answer and say everything. She's like, all right, like your one responses. She means one word responses. Now the wrong move here would be try to get logical and say like, well, I was writing a lot earlier or like maybe even send her a screenshot of how you were writing like a sentence. So like, look how much I wrote to this girl. Yeah, this is not so much logical as emotionally moving her to a more positive place. So I say, ouch, where's the love? And she says, lol, I think you like that. And I respond with love question mark? Nah, I prefer a healthy amount of loathing. Makes the sex even better. So again, just misinterpreting her slightly into something that better suits my frame. And she responds with, I'm surprised that you would even know that, being a tease and all. I respond with, I don't tease, unless it's with my lips. So I kinda wanna paint that picture in her that like, hey, meeting up with me, there's a chance you're gonna get multiple oral orgasms, so, but I'm not gonna, outright say that, I'm just gonna plant the idea in her mind. Kind of like Inception, like I'm just planting seeds and then I'm gonna let her, let them grow and then I'm gonna build on that. So she says, wow, you're cheesy, not the exact response I was hoping for. But now I'm starting to get a hint that there might be an underlying th logical thing here, and like maybe her ego got hurt, the fact that I rescheduled and she thought I was bullshitting her, I wasn't, and you know, that I just, that whatever I flaked on her, maybe it's like I have to logically address that. So if it's there, I wanna just get it out of the way. But I wanna, I wanna address this in like a non-sucking up, non-butthurt, non-confrontational way. Just be very direct and straightforward. So I say, at times, are you always this hostile when someone, tries, when someone gets sick and tries to reschedule? So I give her a logical statement, but it's phrased in such a way that there's no way she can say no. So whenever I give girls like logical statements like that, I always phrase it in a way that there's no way she can possibly say no. Because what is she gonna be like, uh, yeah, I'm always this hostile. That she has to, she has to kind of go along with my frame. And so she doesn't exactly do that, but the vibe starts to shift a little bit. She responds with, I thought you'd be happy that I was still answering. So it's kind of like the whole, oh, like you have to earn me type of frame that a lot of girls take. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna try to earn it, I'm just gonna respond back with sarcasm, and I say, I can hardly suppress my erection. So she says, maybe you can talk to a doctor about that, LOL. And then I say, I prefer a more holistic approach, dot, dot, dot. So now things have gone from negative to neutral. She's not you know, chasing me or anything like that yet, but she's not giving me negative responses either. Now we're kind of bantering a little bit, which is sort of where things would have been if you know, I just messaged a girl for the first time on Tinder, usually you started neutral. So I got her from negative now to a more better place. We're not exactly where I wanna be before I go for the meetup again. So I say, of sorts, winky face. You know, just kind of hinting at like, you know, flirting with her, teasing her a little bit. I'm not coming out and saying like, uh, yeah, like multiple orgasms. I'm just like kind of hinting, putting the idea in her head. And then that usually will work because then the girl says, wait till you taste me. So now that marks going from neutral 
to positive. Now we're kind of flirt. Now we're like actively flirting a little bit. There's some sexuality in the in the exchange, and I say that good question mark. So. A mistake a lot of guys might make here is that they might, you know, just jump on that too quick and they might be like, oh, I can't wait. Like, when are you free or something like that? Just being too, like, too, like, over eager. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be a little bit skeptical because a high value guy would not jump at the first sign of a girl putting it out. The high value guy has just gotten so much, let's just say, pussy for the past, you know, all his life that he doesn't need that one lay so bad. He can kind of take a step back and play with it a little bit, tease the girl. And so the girl, she says, uh, better. So then I say, well, I guess we'll find out during the taste sesh. So here, um, I got her positive. Now I can start going towards the meetup and I'm just assuming that it's on. I'm not gonna be like, well, how about we find out during the taste sesh? I'm just assuming that it's still on. And I say, I guess we'll find out during the taste sesh. Like it's already, like we, like it's already happening. Like it's already set up. And she says, great, I like chocolate and dairy free. So she's shit testing me a little bit, but it's in a positive kind of, fun way it's no longer in like a negative like fuck you type of way and i say don't worry i have something even more delicious dot 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 she says i really don't like it when i don't get my way and when she sends me that text it just like clicks in my mind that she totally falls in the brat category you know girls who like just really test guys to see like if they're actually alpha or dominant and if they're not they will just tear those guys apart and shit on them so whenever i get a girl who's a brat i brat i always respond with I'll be happy to spank the brat out of you. And that text works extremely well with brats. She says, there's so many ready things that I can say back, but truth is I like getting spanked. You've done your research on Latinas, LOL. So this is the most investment we've gotten so far since I re-engaged, good sign. So then I'm gonna build on that a little bit. I'm still not gonna jump at you know the meetup just quite yet. I'm gonna build on you know the positive vibe that we have going now. And I say, had a feeling, and I'll be sure then to slap that ass so hard I'll leave a handprint. And then she responds back with a direct shit test and says, I'm not sure you can handle me. Now the best way to handle that, especially if things have been a little sexual earlier, is this following text. Oh please, I'll have you worn out and begging for more. So she says, so there's more question mark. Now I'm gonna, I have built a good amount of emotional capital. I'm gonna use that capital to cash in on something that which, what I want, which is the meetup. So then I kind of start segueing towards that and say only one way to find out she says, you're not saying anything that I haven't already heard before. So then I challenge her a little bit, but again, in a fun, playful way. Hope you got the ass to back up all the sass. Girls are not used to guys challenging them in a fun, playful way. So if you can find this balance where you're not like just being a total pushover, where you can actively give the girl back some shit, but in a non butt hurt, non needy type of way, it'll be a really high value move. And the girls, and she says, does that usually work on girls? Question mark, LOL. And if you're wondering the best way to handle this text, it's the following, I guess we'll find out tonight. Or you can say, I guess we'll find out soon, whatever is more appropriate in this situation. So then she kind of misinterprets my text and says, on a Monday night, question mark, ha ha. So now that she's bringing up like exact details for the meetup, I can use that and just get straight into logistics. So I say, lol, what nights are you free? She says, to be honest, just Saturday nights, weekdays are a pain, do you smoke by the way? And then I just assume when she says that she's only free on Saturday, that that's the night that we're gonna meet. So I'm not saying, oh cool, do you wanna get together on Saturday? I say, all right, I'll pencil you in for Saturday then. And then I respond to her other text once in a blue moon. So uh, she doesn't respond to my last message, and, but I have a feeling that it's on. I have a good feeling that if I just give it a little time, you know, I still have like four days before Saturday that she'll double text, that she'll message me. And she does, the day before she opens me with, hey trouble. And I respond with sub sexy. She says, you tell me, question mark. Now you can see like a little bit of a flirty undertone to all her messages now. Now she's a lot more interested than she was, you know, five screenshots ago. And I say, you and I tomorrow, devil face. And she responds, where do we meet? I say, my lobby, I live at the blank. And she says, oh, you wanna jump straight into it? I say, we'll start off with a wine, my romantic balcony. And this pretty much sums up what you have to do. As I mentioned earlier in the video, it really comes down to just shifting the interaction from a negative place and just nudging along text by text into neutral and ultimately positive. Then once the dynamic is positive, then you can go for the meetup, you get into logistics. Now the mistake a lot of guys will make is they'll try to do that when the interaction is still in negative or low neutral and then they'll be met with non-compliance or the girl suddenly having a boyfriend. 
So, okay, how do you take it from negative to positive? What are the takeaways? So it comes down to, first off, just strategically misinterpreting the stuff she says into something that better suits your frame. You know, she says something negative, you misinterpret it into something a little bit more positive, but not doing it in a very obvious kind of, uh, you know, like sucking up type of way, but more in like a confident, like you're just like so confident that you just assume everyone's gonna be positive towards you. Secondly, also strategically employing, uh, you know, logic and basically, you know, just addressing concerns or objections that might be there. So I had a feeling that, you know, she might have had her ego bruised by me, you know, rescheduling on her. So I want to really address that. But again, I do that in a way that's, you know, kind of like lawyer talk, where basically I already know what the person's gonna say before I ask the question. And lastly, and the most important part, is having a very, very strong frame. The old adage, the stronger frame wins, is very true. And the frame you want is just of a confident, nonchalant, you know, guy who doesn't give a shit but still goes for what he wants. Like Hank Moody from Californication. You basically wanna be like a mountain and she's throwing stones at it and they just roll off. They don't actually penetrate. And uh, just to keep in mind, what would most guys do in this, inter in this situation? When a girl gives them shit, what will they probably do? Well, they'll either probably get needy and be like, yo girl, come on, like, why are you being like this? I just wanna hang out with you. Come on, when can we hang out? They either get needy when they're giving shit or they'll get combative and they'll be like, fuck you, like, I don't have time for this, like, I'm too good for you anyway. That's what the vast majority of guys will do. But by not doing that, by being like, you don't give a shit and you're almost like amused at why she's being so, let's just say, bitchy, you're slowly gonna get her to shift into your frame. So hopefully you guys found this video valuable. Let me know by smashing the like button, the subscribe button, hitting the bell for notifications. And as always, till next time.